What's the basis, mothers, of coming to this conclusion? These electoral bonds are meant for a political party to be in power in perpetuity because the amount of money through these means which quote-unquote are legitimate will empower that party through capital to influence everything. This is the most unconstitutional, undemocratic, unfair scheme that destroys the very basic structure of our constitution. Free and fair elections is the basic structure of our constitution. This scheme is neither free nor is it fair. It's not free because the, 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 the industrialists cannot say no. It is not fair because in that process the political party in power gets the maximum capital and the capital it wants, not for elections, for other purposes. Of course, you will get this legitimate money through banking channels. In fact, that's the perfectly rational way of enriching yourself. Perfectly rational way. But that's not a justification for empowering yourself. I can understand if there was a correlation between this and the election process in which you must disclose how much you have spent, where you have spent. But that cannot be because the, 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 it is the candidate who is fighting the election, not the political party. As far as persecuting the person who has been given the money by that party to an opposite party, they will be persecuted. But why will they be persecuted? Well, let me tell your lordships, just, just to tell your lordships what the reality is. A big industrialist who has enormous power will give it to all political parties. And the party at the center will never, never hold it against that industrialist. Because everybody is benefited. The system enjoys this money. Enormous <laughs> capital to the party that is in the center and small little donations to the others. And everybody knows about it. It's not, it's not a secret. So there will be no retributions that why did you give it to that party? Because you've also got the maximum. Why should there be a retribution? So this whole argument that no, there will be a retribution. Why have you given to that party? Supposing well, as I've got 100 crores. I get 100 crores, but the donation shows that he has given 500 crores. I know that 100 crores come to me, 400 crores have gone somewhere else. And if, Mullahs, for the 100 crores, the, 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 the quid pro quo is four, five, six instances, Mullahs, then out of 400 crores, why should, why should the retribution be more than just four, five, six instances? The same logic will apply. Same logic will apply. So why are you protecting those, Mullahs? And the most serious part, Mullahs, which I said earlier, that I will never be able to go to a court of law. What you are doing is giving a protection to corrupt transactions by not putting that information in the public domain because I will never know. So, Mullahs, how do I move forward? Where do I go? I can't file an FIR. Because I don't know, I'll be subject to defamation. I can't go to court. I have under 156.3, I'll have to go to, uh, I'll, I'll have to give some data. I don't have the data. So what court order are we talking about? Don't shield the process of corruption itself by allowing this to go on. If you want to deal with corruption, the first thing to do is to quash this scheme. This is the surest way for political perpetuity. Economic policy in the bearer bonds issue because that way you can bring black money into the economic system and pay tax on it. This is nothing to do with it. And Miller's, what is the public interest that is being served here? I don't understand what the public interest is. Public interest not to know, not to disclose, and who are you protecting? For what purpose are you protecting these people? You are actually protecting yourself. 
because you know who has donated. It is self-protection, self-preservation, self-perpetuity. How can the public interest in protecting the identity of donors outweigh the public interest in the public's right to know? To be free from corruption. So politics, Mullahs, as I said, it's impossible for us to get rid of free money, uh, black money, Mullahs. No country in the world has got rid of it. Let's be clear on it. All your lordships can do is to tell the government, this is not the way forward. You want to deal with it, deal with it in a way that is transparent, that makes, gives us the confidence that it is not for you, it is for the larger public interest. So ruling party is not getting maximum because of the scheme. That's my submission. The Lord, uh, According to even otherwise, the ruling party would get... Always. Lord, even be before this scheme, I have shown from 2005 to 2014, whoever was ruling party, Lord, BJD, BJD is a ruling party in uh, one state, state of Orissa. They have maximum uh, Lord, uh, political contribution. That's the trend. That's how the people of India contribute. It's not as if because of the scheme, the ruling party is getting any benefit and there is no level playing field. Yes. Lord, I have Lord, analyzed Lord, in secret ballot that secrecy per se is not antithetical to free and fair elections. Sometimes it enhances free and fair elections. Like Lord, in my respectful submission, the present case, Lord, I have, where I have Lord, attempted to address how Lord, this scheme accelerates or enhances free and fair election. Lord. It is submitted that a con your Lordship have Para 165, my Lord Justice Party will answer. Yeah. It is submitted that a conjoint reading of the principles of secret ballot and the right to privacy under Article 21 clearly postulates that there exists a claim on part of the donors to make donations without fear of reprisal. It is submitted that such right would obviously not be absolute and would have to be counterbalanced with public interest and concept of free and fair elections and further optimized with policy interest of bringing the first step of shift from cash to banking channel in political donations. It is submitted that the balancing element in the present policy is clause 74 of the electoral bond scheme clearly provides for disclosure in case of appropriate proceedings before the competent court or criminal proceedings. Lord, then I will not Lord, bother your lordships uh, further. Lord, then kindly come to page 73. Lord, financial policy and limits of judicial review. Lord, I am not going to read the whole. I will just read the highlighted part because that would, my Lord, in the facts of the case, be very, very relevant and direct for assisting your lordships. Lord, first is Rustam Kavasji Cooper. Your lordships, Lord, know the judgment. Lord, it's a bank nationalization bank case. Then Garg is the bearer bonds. Yes, my Lord, 63. The, Lord, would your lordships yeah. like me to skip the Lord Kavasdi Cooper? Lord? Absolutely. You can just show us the title of the yes. case and then we'll, yes. uh, we'll read it now. No. Then, then no, Lord, Lord, in, in RK well Garg, I would like to read, my Lord, few paragraphs which are not quoted. Lord, the argument that black money would be promoted is dealt with, my Lord. Lord, please read, my Lord, para 19, my Lord. It, it's a long para. I, I don't propose, my Lord, your lordships time. But it, it's a similar argument that you are encouraging black economy. The court will not analyze the entire scheme and say that no, it brings the clean money into the system. Now, my Lord, coming back to my written submissions, my Lord. My Lord, please come to para 78. My Lord, my Lords are aware, but I am always tempted, my Lord, to show these judgments, my Lord. The Lochner era, my Lord, which is known as Lochner era, where the Honorable American Supreme Court was having seven Honorable Judges. And whenever there was a economic policy change by the then the president, it used to be struck down with the majority of four versus one. And popularly, the four were known as four horsemen. 
and less known fact is three were known as three musketeers. What did I, that in America this is possible, but uh, be, be that as it may. Uh, no, I'm sorry, nine, but one was uh, uh, being con convinced by Justice Macron also. Not, it is believed that he used to convince. But uh, le let's not go into it. Lord, uh, this is Lochner versus New York, ultimately Lord, will. overruled. But uh, your Lordship would recall, Lochner versus overrule starts with a dissent by Justice, uh, Justice Brandis. Justice Holmes as well. Well, First by Holmes, that. thereafter of Justice Brandis, and thereafter that yes. popular uh, article written by Justice Brandis on privacy in uh, a Harvard Law Review, and eventually, my lord, this was uh, the Lochner was my lord uh, uh, declared, my lord, not to be a good law, my lord. That also I have, uh, my lord. Uh, All right, we can skip. But my lord, it says the government or the legislature, not the government, the legislature has a right of trial and error. Now, this is accepted by our court recently, reasonably recently, when IBC was challenged. But there were several issues in IBC. There were several lacunas pointed out in IBC. But the court said that that free play in the joints will have to be given. Even trial and error, unless it is so abhorrently or atrociously arbitrary that it can never satisfy our conscience, it, the court would defer to the wisdom of the legislative action. One in demonetization we are also. My Lord, I, I have re, my Lord, relied upon that, my lords. Uh, please see, my Lord, at is the I think. I have just, my Lord, uh, we, we have quoted that judgment, my Lord, your Lordship's judgment in demonetization. But I will just, my Lord, give that uh, site. Well, but the pagination. Lord, I have not marked, but I have. I am relying upon the Vivek Narayan Sharma. Pardon, Lord. Vivek Narayan Sharma. Vivek Narayan Sharma, Lord. Page seventy-six, Lord. I am sorry. Page seventy-six, Lord. 